Greetings, fellow human beings. You're listening to T from 8-Bit Bones, and welcome to my Hitman playlist. So, the time has come, finally. The time has come. Welcome to Hokkaido, 47. Hokkaido, the final level of uh, Season 1 in uh, this new Hitman experience that we're getting. And uh, I've been a fan of the Hitman games for a very long time. Years of my life dedicated to this game. And this is the best installment so far, so I thought I'd uh, go through the final level and just give you a brief sort of opinion on what I thought about the season, you know, and um, the direction that it's gone in, which is uh, very satisfying. It's uh, freedom of choice all the way. And uh, in this final level, you can't do any loadouts, so you can't actually uh, sort of plan anything. You've got to just go in and use the, uh, the level environment to uh, conduct your affairs. And... Um, that's fantastic. So I'm just going to make my way up here and uh, into this wonderful garden area. Look at the scenery. Magnificent. I mean, this game has taught me that location is key. I mean, it's got to have a character. It's got to have an atmosphere to it. And uh, you really engage in that area a lot more. And you're, you're willing to seek out all the hidden gems like, like this thing here. Found that on my first playthrough. Love finding a bit of, a, bit of polage. Allows you to navigate the level uh, rather well. You know, but uh, th there are downsides, don't get me wrong, the game's not perfect in, in that respect. I mean, they've gone to a lot of effort to make this very sort of culturally um, sort of authentic and it all looks, it looks very nice and very much uh, gives you a feel of the location. But when you go and talk to a guard, he's talking in an American accent and that's really kind of like just takes you out of the, uh, <laughs> the whole illusion that, uh, that you're actually in this country. So um, some more details in that area could have been refined in the game entirely, you know, um, when you're in different locations, have those accents, have um, have those characters, you know, because they've all got their own stories, it's just they're all saying it in the same accent, which um, is unusual, I feel. Alright, let's fuck up his day, there you go, and just uh, strangle his friend. Break it? Yeah, let's break it. There you go, job done. Okay, nice. Actually, I don't, I don't need to hide his body, we're not, we're not going for perfection here, we're just going for for a playthrough, so let's just let's just, uh, take his costume. There we go. Oh, there's a cleaver on the side here. Can never say no to a cleaver. Got to have that on me. Right. Got to use that to its full extent, eventually. Right. So for this part of the uh, mission, I'm going to use this remote control chip thing, which basically increases and decreases the chemical dosage of a drug inside a patient's brain. So I'm just going to slide over here, press this button, and make this guy extremely fucking high. And I like this. I like this this humour that they've got in this game. It's scattered throughout every single level. There's these little moments of um, oddities that are really amusing to watch and interact with. And that guy, that guy on the left, is just like, "What the fuck is this guy?" <laughs> he has no idea what's going on. Um, I commend him for standing by his friend. Oh, he's going to share with his babies. Interesting, mate. That is some fucked up shit you were just chatting. Some really fucked up shit. Okay. Right, he's going to go into that uh, room, and he's going to freak out the guards and make them leave. So it's cleaver time! Let's get the cleaver out. Fantastic. I'm just going to sort of hang back for a little bit here, while he uh, does that interaction over there. Uh, there's, a, well, there's a Kill Bill sort of corpse there, for no particular reason. Okay, alright. The guards are out of the way. There's that, they're staring at me, they're eyeing me up. I like that. I loved all those little details that they did um, They did put into this experience, and uh, it makes really keeps you on edge, keeps you engaged with the experience. It's great stuff. Right. There we go. Let's just get rid of him. Okay, we're going to press this button. And as you can see, there's a little heart in there, and I'm just going to destroy the fuck out of it. And lob it in the bin. Lovely. Elegant solution, 47. With sodas on the operating table. And no hope of getting a second right-sided heart in time, you have effectively killed him without laying a hand on him. Well, that's just how I roll, baby doll. That's just how I roll. Fantasticated. So, um, this game actually improves upon pre previous installments of, uh, of the Hitman series by implementing sort of uh, features that simplify certain matters or concerns that were in previous titles, such as um, the focus meter. Which, uh, in previous games, like in Blood Money and stuff, it sort of flashed green, amber, and red, and that was supposed to indicate how suspicious the sims were of your behaviour. But I was never quite sure what costume to use, how close I could get to them. But they've simplified the entire matter with this, uh, this dot system, which you can see being implemented right now. I mean, that indicates that they'll be suspicious of me if they see me. Cleaver! <laughs> nice. Uh, oh, 
Still got the scissors. Oh, I'm going to use them to uh, their full extent as well. Let's get all stabby stabby on this gentleman. There we are. Job done. Lovely. I'm going to steal your clothes, bitch. And a, a lot has to be said about the environments that they've produced in, in, in this game. Um, because, of course, they came out in episodic blocks. Um, so, you know, there was an entire season's worth that you could purchase at the start. Um, or you could buy each level as they sort of came out if you, if you found that you were into it. And um, I, think, I think that was a good way of doing it. Because the levels are so, so massive and there's so much to do. And, and basically ev every level you get is about five levels. Because there's at least 12 different ways that you can go about doing stuff, you know. Oh, oh. You. Yeah, you. you weren't there last time I did I this playthrough. What the fuck are you doing? You. Stick to your fucking routine, Sim. Hey, why aren't you listening to me? Are you deaf? Yeah, I'm deaf. Yo, yo. That's what you get. That's what you fucking get. Hmm. Um, so, so yeah, what was I saying? Anyway, <laughs> this game is awesome. And I'd highly recommend it. It does have a few problems. The, you know, the dialogue overlapping. The Sims sometimes, um, doing odd behaviors and uh, you know they can't find you just because you're hidden behind the side of a door or something and it, you know um, things like that get in the way and draw you out of the experience so I wouldn't say it's perfect but it's damn good damn good I mean I'm just preparing sushi right now I mean that's awesome I love the way that he completely takes on the persona of whatever character's costume he's got you know he interacts with the people and acts you know like he is that person like, fuck off, bitch. You can't have any of this sushi. That's reserved for her, okay? She's getting that. All right, fuck off. You know? It's immersion. There's some immersion there, you know? Because you know it's all not real at the end of the day. I think that's why you don't feel conflicted about it. Okay, so here's here's the uh, here's the target. Um, <laughs> and she's going to try some of my sushi. Oh, and she's going to die. She's going to die so hard. Go on, enjoy it. There you go. Yeah, it's good stuff, isn't it? Love the sinister sort of one-string note you can hear in the background as this happens. You know, little details like that. And that's another thing I've got to commend the game for. The music, music is fantastic for for Hitman games for all of them. If you listen to some of the music and some of the old um, the old games, it's absolutely great stuff. Oh, glitchy death, just what you want. And she's down. Job done. Job done. Target down. I don't want to go that way. There's no door that way. Let's go this way. Fantasticated. So, so just to sum up, this game gives you an expectation of impending danger within every tiny corner of its environments, and it it really builds the tension um, up as you progress through your missions. And it just feels fantastic when you finally do achieve these goals, and you do it in the way that you want to do it. There are sort of uh, opportunities you can overhear conversations within the environment, and that can lead you to certain locations and interesting ways to take people out. I mean, it's such a good package for newcomers and for people that have played previous Hitman games. I mean, it's all here. All the ingredients are right there. You know, you get thrown into a level. It's a playground. You can experiment. You can discover, you know, how crazy you are and things like that. But, you know, it, it's good stuff. It's all good stuff. Um, I'd highly recommend it, and I've really enjoyed my time with it. I will probably do some more videos on Hitman, even though it's finished, because uh, there's so much I can still do. So uh, if you enjoyed this episode, um, please do uh, like and subscribe. You've been listening to T, to live is to play, and I will catch you next time, players. No, no, hello. Oh, hello, everybody. It's no, it's a, oh. No, 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 there's a fire! Shit's on fire! T! T! The train's on fire!